Storytelling is one of the most valuable skills for the Homo sapien. Ever since we evolved into this form almost 200,000 years ago, storytelling has been what has converted peasants into kings and what has converted kings into gods. So in this video, I'm going to teach you what the difference is between a bad story and a good story. And I'm also going to tell you where exactly you suck, but we're going to do it through a live experiment. So I'm going to tell you two stories and you tell me which one is better. But I want you to get the full feel of the story. So I want you to close your eyes and be honest to me. Okay. And hear the stories out. Here's the first one. Bro, last night, this couple was traveling from Himachal to Chandigarh and they got killed by a serial killer on the way. That's it. That's the story. Now here's the second one. Ajeeb Dasata Hai was playing on the radio. It was 9 p.m. in the night and there was heavy rain. Arjun and Sanjana were in the car. They'd just been to the in-laws' house and they just got recently married. Sanjana was really pissed off with her mother-in-law. They had had a fight about something trivial and because of that, Arjun and her had a rift going on between them. It felt like the Soviet Union Cold War. No words exchanged. Just old school Hindi music playing on the radio. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you an emergency message. On the highway between Chandigarh and Bir, there is an unknown killer on the loose. We have received multiple reports that there is an armed dangerous man walking around murdering innocent civilians. We recommend you be cautious and do not stop while going through these roadways. Suddenly, Arjun looked to Sanjana and he said, do you think something's going to happen to us? I think we're fine, right? Sanjana looked to him, still angry, and she didn't say a word. She looked back at the road, staring straight ahead. They continued for another two hours. The rain got stronger and stronger until it eventually just gave away. Complete silence. And what happens when rain gives away is that the soil gives a smell, a smell called petrichor, which makes you feel like you're transported into a different island. But there was something sinister about this environment. The wind was howling, it was chilly. And whenever the wind is chilly, the stories become sinister. Tick, tick. <laughs> Suddenly the car gave way. Arjun had been driving this reliable Santro for the last six years. There was never any issue with it. Why now? <laughs> said Arjun. I don't know why this is not working. I don't know. This has never happened before. Arjun took a deep breath in and let it out. It was the middle of the night. He looked at the fuel tank and it looked like it was okay. He didn't know what was wrong with the car. He was not a mechanic. But he knew that he'd passed a mechanic's store almost an hour ago. He looked at Sanjana and he said, Listen, I'm going to go get help. Because of this killer or whatever on the loose, I'm not going to let you come with me. You stay in the car. In fact, go to the back seat, lie down on the floor, and, you know, put that blanket on yourself. There's a blanket in the back seat. Put the blanket on yourself and just cover yourself. Right? He manually push the car in front of a big banyan tree. And he said, I'm going to remember this banyan tree because this is where I have to come back. It was just forest and road. There were no other landmarks. And he said to Sanjana before leaving, I don't want you to open the door for anybody else. When I come back, I'm going to knock three times. And I want you to open the door only when you hear three knocks. 
not otherwise, only when you hear three knocks. You got it? Sanjana looked at him and said, Okay, okay, cool. I'm worried. Uh, do you really have to go? Can't we just wait out till the morning? Before she finished her sentence, Arjun had already closed his door and was on his way. Sanjana hid below the back seat, put the blanket on. She waited. Half an hour passed. An hour passed. What must be taking Arjun so long? Two hours passed. Now, Sanjana was getting really worried. Four hours passed and Sanjana was breaking out into cold sweat. Where is my husband? What is going on? I'm pretty sure the mechanic store is not that far away. Suddenly, she heard what she was waiting for. One knock, two knocks, three knocks. Sanjana was excited. She breathed a sigh of relief. She pulled off the blanket, started to reach towards the door until she froze. A fourth knock, a fifth one, a sixth one. She slid back into the blanket and the knocks continued throughout the rest of the night. Sanjana did not sleep a wink because of fear. What was going on? Was it an animal? Was it the killer? Where was Arjun? All her fears were answered when she heard police sirens. A police car parked right next to hers. A gentleman stepped out and forced open her door. He said, ma'am, please come with us. He picked her up and he put the blanket around her and he asked her to keep walking with him to the car. And he said the words, Ma'am, whatever you do, please do not turn around. Sanjana, stricken with fear and not ready to listen to anybody else, turned around and what she saw made her scream. It was her husband hung on the tree. The knocks were his feet hitting the car. So, you heard two stories. What was the difference between the two? The first story had some information in it. The second one had information but also had detail. It had more information. It had descriptions. The wind was chilly. It's not just a windy day. It was a chilly day. Right? There's this video on YouTube where somebody says, don't use the word very, right? Instead of saying it was very cold, use the word chilly. So descriptive words, more detail, more colors, right? And the best example or the way to transmit this to your brain is to show you an example in a way you'd understand. Here is a picture, right? And it's a low resolution picture. It's a 144 pixel picture. Right? You've seen these on YouTube when your internet quality goes down. And here's a picture in 4K. Do you see the difference? Do you see that this 4K picture contains so much more detail? Do you now see that quality stories have much more detail? They're like giving another person a 4K picture. And the reason for this is that when you tell a story, you are not just sending words to the other person. You are transmitting images. Think of it like this, right? When you start speaking, it's like a data cable goes from your mouth to somebody else's ear. Or if you're writing, then a data cable goes from your, uh, you know, whatever you've written stuff on to somebody's eyes. And you're transmitting information. 
that information goes into their brain right and then they see images you're transmitting images and what do those images do all images transfer emotion you see a funny image you see an image of spongebob hitting squidward that's funny you'd laugh if you see an image of a malnourished child in a war stricken country you'd look at that image and you say you'd feel that empathy right so images transfer emotion so essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to transfer emotion and the way you're doing it is in a very roundabout way it's not directly giving a person an emotion right you can't do that we we have not evolved to do that you use a special language you use words to transfer those emotions through images and what you have to learn is high resolution storytelling all the stories you've told so far were the first type of story low res 144 pixel 360 pixels what you need to do is get to 4k and to do that the first step is to improve your vocabulary no matter what language you're telling the story in the more you can specifically describe an environment the more you can say words like there was tension in the air the more you can describe a scene more vividly you're like a painter with words right and you need to paint a very specific image how would you do that if you don't have the right colors and the colors in this case are the words step 2 is to put yourself in the shoes of the listener what sort of images do you want to display in your head a good exercise is to think of a scenario and say well how best do i describe the scenario to myself was the road gray or was the road gray filled with moss because that matters you're painting a very specific high resolution picture you're the first target so think about how you'd like to think about the story remove the context that you yourself would have right you might have context to the situation you might know when you're talking about a tree that it's a large tree why do you expect the audience to know it is necessary to tell the audience it was a large sequoia tree it puts a very specific image in their head so no fuzzy images specific images and how do you do that go back to step 1 better vocabulary the final step is to exercise this muscle of storytelling how do you do it you go to your friends and you tell them a story and then you ask them to draw pictures of that story you can do this with your parents you can tell them a story and then tell them can you draw a storyboard of what i told you in animation a storyboard is basically just a rough diagram of what the scene should look like where is the character how does the road look how do the trees look right and you see if that matched up to what you said so basically what you're doing is you're doing reverse transmission you're doing a transfer where i am sending you a story it's going through your ears to your brain now i'm saying boss from your brain to your hands to a piece of paper give it back and see was it the same or did something else come out see your accuracy determine your accuracy through somebody else's art so that's it these are three tips that you can actually practice to make your stories better I'm expecting a lot of you to add more details to your story and remember the difference between a good storyteller and a bad storyteller is in one word resolution